where I left off with the last video is I started to introduce some of these bolder, kind of crazier colors into my refined paint layer. They're at lower opacity. I can steal some of this halftone print skin tone from my werewolf. But I was thinking I'd, I'd draw him pretty believably or paint him pretty believably up to a, a refined paint layer on this layer. And then the next layer, I'll add all the werewolf features. And then I could always like do an animation kind of transforming between the two. Digital art gives you endless possibilities. Now I have my shape painting layer underneath and I have it locked. So this is all I've done on the refined paint layer so far. It's smaller in brush size. It's more directional. It's uh, It blends more with more nuanced color. And then I have my palette on a locked layer and now it's my refined paint. But it really will bring shape and refinement to your your painting. Now, digital painting is just a lot of repetitive effort. But as I try to do in these tutorial videos, I just try to cognitively model what I'm thinking as I'm doing them. And that's harder with digital painting because it's kind of mindless in a lot of ways. You just keep going, just keep swimming. But if you notice that you're doing something that's just not working very well, don't just hope it will correct itself. Try to assess what you don't like about it. Maybe it's the brush size. Maybe it's the brush shape. Maybe it's uh, losing things that you liked from before. A common approach to blend some of these hard edges is to use the smudge tool, but that will get rid of all the texture in your brush. So to blend, I tend to like just doing it with steps of color. Because I'm at a lower opacity, like to blend this forehead, for instance, you reference the forehead from light to dark. I take a highlight with my refined brush, maybe a pretty bright highlight. Maybe I'll use this strong yellow. I put some of that in always exaggerate. I'm doing it in the direction of the forehead, right? A little bit like what Van Gogh does with his brush strokes. Just layering it over and over again, but because it's at 50%, it's going to mix with that underpainting underneath. So I've got a lot of highlight now. Now I want to start using this mid-tone at 50% and feathering into the highlight. It's all quite subtle. And it looks harsh at first, but then you keep picking from the new colors that your overlapping opacities give you. And it's like blending a grayscale or anything else, except we're just gradating between different colors until eventually we get to our shadows. And just like the highlights, we want to make sure that those are put in strongly at first. And we can even put some random color in there. And then cut into them. Now, my way of digital painting with this is almost like how you would mix colored pencil. Because when you paint with traditional paint, say it's acrylic paint or oil paint, not so much watercolor, but the, the brush automatically kind of takes the wet paint that's already there and mixes it with the new paint you're painting. This is more additive, more like colored pencil. So 
you have to just put it down on top. And so the only way you can really mix it with what's underneath is to keep your opacity lower. But I don't like to use the smudge tool to mix because otherwise we lose all of that beautiful texture. So I'll save it and show you what I mean. Dodge and burn can be really good tools, you know, if you're if you just want to lighten or darken what you already have. But the smudge tool or the blur tool, they're actually going to average your pixels together. And when you do that, not only does it take a lot of digital processing, so my computer is lagging, but I lose all of that character that was there before. It can be good on an underpainting, but once you get to refine painting, try to, to build up your own kind of texture. And this is about the level of finish I want for this painting. You know, so when I'm looking at it, I can see the individual kind of textural marks. And it takes a lot of time but I'm trying to build it fast. And just like a real painting, it's okay if there's some stray colors and stray marks along the way. I can take a color I like there and I can put it as a highlight in the hair. Take an approach I've used in one place, use it in another place. And it's always a good idea to keep the whole of the painting in mind. That's why once you get to this stage, sometimes you want to have a new window open, which is called the navigator. There it is. And the navigator, if we move it up to the top here, shows you, no matter how much you zoom in, will show you what it's looking like from a distance. It's also a way that you can move around your image pretty quickly without having to hold down the space bar and use the hand tool. So the hairline of a human being, you know, at the scalp and at the, the sideburns is a good metaphor for digital painting and feathering, right? It's because it's individual hairs. It's not just an, a clean edged shape. So think of that when you're painting. You're putting down individual strokes and kind of layering them like individual hairs into what you want. Maybe that will be helpful. So I'm still painting him without glasses. My thinking is I can give him some kind of shadow and texture on his cheeks in anticipation of glasses. But um that next I'll do all the werewolf stuff and then I'll put the glasses up on top of that. Because accessories should go on last. Now it's easy to start ignoring some parts, like I haven't done his other eyebrow. So that's again, thinking of the, the whole rather than just individual parts. And don't be afraid of going too dark or too bright, because remember, it's all about mixing from that point. Put in some eyelashes. Don't be afraid of color. All my high school paintings were imitations of German Expressionist paintings, which was very age appropriate and angsty, but it also got me over being afraid of using a lot of color, even when you're trying to do something believable. And I kind of like to embrace the things that you can't do with photography as easily, right? Like use crazy colors. In fact, maybe I want to get some more in there that I don't even have in my reference. Like a nice green. 
and I can steal from it, put it in the shadows. Or that purple that I put in my palette that I haven't used too much. Or a darker variation of that purple. Been ignoring the lips. And I'm resisting the urge to zoom in too much. So you'll all find your own ways. I do the structure of the ear. Got to do the shadows on the neck. So this is something to keep in mind for your final project. What's difficult in digital painting is bringing everything up to the same level of finish. That means that you can't have like eyeballs that look really good and then a neck that looks awful. The eye is always going to go to the part that looks least finished. So it's not about trying to finish off one part and then move on to the next part. It's trying to bring kind of a, an overall finish to all of it as you go along. So that's why it's nice to have the navigator to be reminded. I still have to do the hat and the shirt and all that stuff. But you just get seduced into the parts that are more fun. And I understand that. So at any time, you can turn off your refined paint layer and see how far you've come, right? You can even turn off your base paint layer and see that your refined paint layer is pretty cool just on its own. It also shows you what you haven't done at all, like the nose. And it takes a while just to build that texture of colors with different pixel strokes. get there eventually. And often you have to reestablish your shadows because all of these kind of feathered brush strokes will weaken them. That's why you establish that darkest dark, so you don't muddy it and lose it completely. That would be sad. This is all just at 50% opacity with a brush that's around 100 pixels. I'm trying not to zoom, zoom in much more than I am. If you really fall in love with the potential of what you can do with this, then you have your final conceptual project where you can really leverage and dig into the potential of digital painting with other digital art forms like compositing, like digital coloring and line art. This can just always go on the top of anything you want to do. If you find that your computer starts to lag a little and slow down, just make sure you save your work. 